Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com here to test the D600, the Nikon D600 in a real world shooting environment. So I decided to go back to high school. Why not go back to high school to shoot some football under the lights to push the camera to the extreme? So what I have right here is my Nikon D600. We have another one on the Vanguard tripod recording the video. So all the video that you're going to see from today and all the photos are going to be taken with the Nikon D600. Currently the 24 to 85 kit lens is on the D600 that's recording me. I've got my wireless microphone, but the whole point today is to try and push this camera to the extremes. How does the autofocus work? How does the high ISO work? Um, how does it look in general when we're out shooting sports in low light? Then we're going to move and shoot some portraits, maybe get some cheerleaders numbers. I'm not going to get their numbers because they're too young. We'll leave that to Sam Green behind the camera to get their numbers because he is still 18, I think. 18? He's, he's 19, he's still a teen, so he can do that. So really, it's all about running this camera through its paces to see how it's going to act. So all throughout this video, you're gonna see me turn to the camera and start talking to it. I have to put on my third-person shooter camera so you can see what we're looking at when we're shooting, but that's what it's gonna be. Just gonna give you my mind as we're shooting, figure out what we think about this camera, and moving on from there. So I've been shooting around just a little bit, and again, I forgot to put on the first person shooter camera. Whose fault is that? I'm gonna blame Sam for that one also. Sam, can you get it out of the bag? I'll get it on in a minute. Uh, so I've been shooting around, and we're losing light quick. So I'm at 2000 ISO to start. The results so far are pretty good. The first thing that I noticed is that the, the focus area is much smaller. It is a much smaller focus area than I'm used to using a D4. Uh, is that a detractor? Yeah, a little bit, but so far, very responsive. Uh, the focus is quick even with the 300 2.8 on there uh, and I'm happy with the, the, the shooting I'm only shooting one frame I don't I don't motor drive you know that so so far feels pretty good but as the light drops I'm gonna have to bump that ISO we're gonna have to push this camera to its limits wait till these lights come on and then see what kind of results we're getting when I used to shoot here back in school I was using an 800 ISO film I was shooting uh, with a D what well, was not even a D a Nikon F90, F90, no, D N90, N90. So I had an N90, N90S, and it was out here shooting even at 2.8. I was still shooting at like one hundredth of a second at 2.8 because the light was so bad. They didn't have these good lights yet. So now it's much better. We're gonna test it with the D600, see what we come up with, and that's it. Here we go. I'm not gonna get in the way of the marching band. We'll, we'll be done, oh, the marching band's coming. So before the marching band gets all the way over to here with their flutes and everything, I noticed something weird here. My first pictures I were taken were so overexposed it wasn't even funny. Why? Because the indicators are backwards. Default, they're back, all right, good, they're over there. Default, they're going backwards. So when I was turning it to the right to be like, move my uh, exposure this way, that wasn't happening. It was going the other way. That wasn't good. So I just went into the menu system. I went into F, for those of you who have a D600, controls under the custom menu settings, custom setting menu, controls, uh, where is it? Oh yeah, reverse button, F8, reverse indicators, boom. So now when I move the shutter speed to the right, as in going faster, it's gonna show me that it's underexposed. When I slow it down, it's gonna show me that it's now 
going to be, well, one way or the other. Some way or the other, I'm gonna say it right, but there you go. I just reversed them so that when I move the shutter to the left, slow it down, indicator's going that way, then it's gonna go that way, the other way, like that. So a quick observation about the smaller focusing area. I like to switch into single focus sometimes when the players or the coaches aren't moving or there's some portrait opportunities on the sideline. And what I noticed is that I like to use my rule of thirds. I like to use my composition more so where I lock in and then recompose, or sometimes I don't like doing that. I just like to move my focusing point so I don't have to lock in and recompose. But in this case, there's a lot more times, a lot more situations because it's such a smaller area where I think there were only literally like three focusing points at the top of the circle where I'm used to going all the way out and in where I'm gonna have to get used to locking in, recomposing and moving around. So that's just a quick observation I have about those focusing points. They're much smaller. Uh, it's just a smaller area of focus. So I have to get used to that. It's not the worst thing in the world. Again, it's a middle of the road camera. It's still great. We just have to get used to some of the, some of the what we may see as shortcomings coming from a D4, but still it's quality. It's fun to use so far. And there you got it. There's been an interesting development since I left school here. They, they used to have grass. Now I don't know what this stuff is, but I think it is, it, it, it's due for a sniff test of AstroTurf, or what do they call this, NextTurf? I don't even know, what do you people call this stuff? It's like, it's fake. I'm gonna try to snort the line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, don't try to snort a line at home, all right? Not of this fake carpet. It's basically plastic. They're playing on plastic, and there you have it. Yeah, all right, all right, we got the band. They're marching and they're playing in the band. There was something interesting. Oh, they're gonna do the national anthem. I can't talk over the national anthem, so I'm just gonna, where's, where's the flag? Anybody see a flag around here? Where's the flag? I, this way? Flag, oh, there it is. All right, so while I have a second here, I want to tell you about the focusing. So far, it seems a little slow. It's keeping up pretty well, but it doesn't shoot obviously as fast as something like a D4. Uh, it seems to chug along, but the focus has been pretty good. I've switched to Dynamic 21 so that the focusing, just let Sam, let me know if I'm gonna get hit or anything. Oh, there's something going on. Okay, so something was going on. I figured I would shoot it. Um, sorry, I'm in the way of the uh, off the side judge. Um, anyway, so what I think, oh, the chains are moving. The chains are moving. So while that's happening, the focus has been pretty good. I'm liking what's going on so far. It's not shooting super duper fast at five and a half frames a second, but oh well. Well, the chains are here. I better move. Here's a quick tip when you're shooting football in lights like this. The lights aren't gonna change, so once you lock in your exposure, so right now I'm at 500th of a second at 2.8, Nothing's gonna change. What ISO am I at? I think I'm at 4,000. Yeah, 4,000 ISO. Nothing's gonna change. The lights aren't changing, but what you have to remember is that it's brighter closer to the sidelines because that's where the big ass lights are. You can see them over there. They're closer to the sidelines, but as you get to the middle of the field, your shutter speed, you know, you're losing a little bit of light. It's falling off because it's not hitting as far. So just be cognizant of that when you're shooting. 
that it's gonna be brighter at the sideline. You can speed your shutter speed up more because it's brighter, but in the middle, 500th of a second is about right. And if they got to the sidelines, about 800th of a second would be more along the lines of what I would like. So I just motor drove for the first time tonight. I wanted to see how the camera would react to me taking four, five, six, maybe three, four, five, six frames in a row. The quarterback stepped back to make a nice long pass, which ended up being a reception, uh, and I ran through it. It's not super duper fast, but Sam said something to me that he said that it may not be that best, the best for sports, but remember, it's not all about motor driving. It's about those single moments that you capture that are great. So it did well. You can see those pictures popping up on the screen as I'm talking. It did a good job with it. The focus stayed locked. It went through. It worked well. Um, where else do I want to go with that? Uh, but one thing that was a little slow was the playback. When I'm looking through to play back, the images, they don't cycle very quick. So that is what it is. Again, for what the camera offers and for what it costs, so far so good. I'm liking the results. We'll have to sit at the computer to see what we really, really ultimately get. But I'm really happy with what I'm getting out of this. Like I say, any tool you put in my hands, I'm gonna use it to the fullest. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna like it. And so far, so good. Let's get back to shooting. So it's time for the halftime report now that we're sitting here after the first two quarters are done. So far, so good. The camera's responding very well. Happy with the focusing, happy with the speed a little bit, but you have to remember that I'm not gonna grade this camera as if it was a D4. I'm not gonna compare it to a D4 because it's just not. There's no reason to compare it. This D600 is a pretty good, it's, it's in a pretty good place. It's kind of like, say, the D3100. It's an entry level into the full frame but it's much better than a D3100 because of the full frame. The focusing has been fine. Uh, I've even gotten used to the smaller focusing points. I've gone into 21 point uh, AF dynamic focus so that it can it, it can uh, get the guys as they run, it can track them. So I'm pretty happy with that. I even outran the camera. What I mean by that is I held the shutter down took 10, 11 pictures in a row until it clogged up the buffer. The buffer's not very big. But again, how many times are you gonna shoot 10, 11 frames in a row? I don't do that. I don't normally shoot that. I just did it to outrun the camera to see how far I could push it. Normally, if you're taking two, three, four shots in a row and you stop, you wait 10, 20 seconds before you shoot again, you're gonna be perfectly fine. So I don't see that as a major issue because the point is when you're out shooting, you should be focusing in on capturing those decisive moments more than motor driving and wishing and hoping and spraying and praying that you get a good shot. So I want to go into a little tip and I won't be able to tell you whether it's worked or not until I get into the computer but what that is is sometimes even though I'm with shooting with a 2.8 lens I may shoot at 3.2 why because it's going to give me a little bit more depth of field it's going to help my focus when I'm it's going to help the depth so if I miss by a little bit at 2.8 you got a little more room at 3.2 or 3.5 but when you do that you're cutting back on the amount of the light so what I do is I speed up my, I bump up my ISO. I went to 6400 here so that I could get one, a faster shutter speed of 800th of a second, and two, shoot at 3.2 instead of 2.8. So that's giving me, you know, I had to bump the shutter because I don't want to lose the action. I want to freeze that action. So in order to freeze the action and, and keep 3.2 working, I had to raise the ISO. And only time will tell when I sit in front of the pictures on the computer whether or not this camera holds up well to 6400. So we'll do that at the very end when I'm doing a full-on wrap-up. I will tell you 
right there on the computer how well it did do. So, so far I've been happy with the shots I've been getting. Um, the action shots have been good. The focus seems to track very well, not missing even with a behemoth of a lens 302.8. Been very good. Other than that, I haven't broken into too many features because like I said earlier, once you get your settings out here, the lights aren't changing. It's already pitch black. It's already dark as dark can be, but these lights, these four banks of lights are on and they're even. They're not going to change. So once you get that setting of 500th of a second at 2.8 at six at 4,000 ISO, you really don't have to change that at all. So there's not many other features that you need to change in this camera. So I've been very happy. Coming up after this, we may let Sam Green grab the 302.8 and the D600 to shoot, and maybe get his ideas what he feels about this camera, being that he actually owns one. So there you have it. Let's get back to shooting right after the halftime is over and the drum line is done. So there you have the hands-on part of the D600, and a really important part now is to sit down and look at the images on the computer and tell you how they actually worked. How did the focus work? How does the high ISO capability work? And I can tell you a little bit more about how the camera worked, this uh, 24 to 85 lens for doing the video. As you saw, the video wasn't that bad. The, the video capture of me there on the sidelines wasn't bad with something like this. I shot it only at f4 the whole time to give me some range, uh, and I'm not sure what the major difference would be with a larger 2.8 lens. I mean, I would love to continually use those 2.8 lenses uh, in video, but this lens, the 24 to 85, for video wasn't that bad. It really didn't do a bad job and I'm pretty happy with the clarity and the color that I came out with. So let's move over to the computer and start to look through these images. I have what is this, 43 of 191 images so again I didn't motor drive too far uh, and I just shot. So you know I started at 2000 ISO on the sidelines you can see the depth. Look at, look at, look at how the shallow depth of field is here. I mean, look how sharp that is, by the way. Unbelievable. Um, you can see that the focus points are right around here. Not points, but the focus area. Uh, this is 2000 ISO, and everything looks pretty pretty tack and nice. By the way, you can, you can download all of these files on the website. I'm going to upload them as full res to the Flickr. You can access those through fronosphoto.com for the review from this. Uh, so moving forward, let's just move forward. So you have a band person playing. I'm pretty happy with what's going on here. Nice and sharp right here on the eye. What are we at now? 3200 ISO. Still at 1 640th of a second. I like shooting at faster shutter speeds. Um, this is noise, whatever. We're zoomed in one to one. Let me just start off by saying, in, in a lot of pictures, people are overanalyzing what grain and what noise are. To me, when I see these specs and I see these dots, if there's no color artifacts involved there, I consider that to be grain, film grain, similar to what we had when we shot film. And I know we've moved way past that. Not a lot of people shoot film anymore, but this grain at 3200, when you're looking at an image, oh, sorry dad, my dad's calling. I'll talk to him later. Um, when you look at an image like this, you can't really, I mean, look how sharp this area is. We're moving through. Look at how amazing this is right here. There is no noise and grain right in there. There's some specs, there's some dots, but again, that's going to happen when you zoom in on things. So I'm very happy with the results there. The color looks great. So now we're going to move into football. You're going to see that I started from 4,000 ISO and then we push it to 6,400 ISO by the very end. So let's move into these. Action shot, 302.8. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the focus point. Being that this hand right here is extremely in focus, and this guy running is not tack sharp. For some reason, I am focused over here. I don't know if that was my doing when I was focusing. Uh, I may have been on nine point autofocus, but then I switched to dynamic 21. Dynamic 21 pretty much takes up one third of the whole of the whole frame when you're looking through the smaller focusing points. So I guess I should talk about that right off the bat. The smaller focusing area, it is much smaller, but you're gonna get used to it. For sports, you're primarily focusing in that center area anyway, more you know to the left, to the right, a little bit up here, but you still have this whole area that is open. Most of the time, you're, you're, you're just gonna put your focusing point on the player's chest as they're running. Uh, that's where you're gonna wanna focus. And what Dynamic 21 does, it means that there's one point in the middle, 
and then the t wherever you put it, and then the 21, 20 points around it, if a subject moves from one point to the other or shifts, the camera's autofocus is gonna jump and shift with it to track your subject. That's why I use Dynamic 9 a lot of the times, and then use 21 for the game right here. Like this shot, works well. You can see tight action, really nice color. These are all color corrected because that's what you have to do with the RAW files. But we're at 4,000 ISO, let's zoom in here. Y yeah, dots, grain, okay, noise, that's perfectly fine, this is normal. You're gonna see this in, in any camera. You're gonna see this in the D4, but really at 4,000, this is really nice. Obviously, I think it's better than what the D7000 was giving you, but remember, when you're zoomed in this far, you're really blowing, it's like you're blowing it up and cropping it to an extreme amount. So just because you have the 24 megapixels, in my opinion, doesn't mean that you should focus in on cropping a ton. I really am not a big fan of cropping, and that's what you see in all these images. They are cropped in the camera. They are shot. The way that you see it is the way that it was shot. Nothing wrong with cropping, <clears throat> excuse me, as you're learning, as you're starting to figure out what your composition can be, you can learn from cropping. Learn from it, but when you overdo it is when you start to see noise and grain become more of an issue. We'll talk about that more as we move on. We got the quarterback about to get tackled, pitching the ball off to the running back, cut his foot off a little bit. All right, 300, you can't zoom, but the quality so far, the focus is working very well. The camera feels great in the hands. This is filling the frame. He is, his feet are not on the ground. Boom, he's kicking up some of the rubber or whatever it is. And, you know, let's look at the football. You can read that it says CR South right on the ball. Uh, one three, what, one five hundredth of a second, 4,000 ISO. There's still room to go slower. I wouldn't go slower in my opinion, but that's a great action shot. Look at that. The camera held up well. Uh, I'm just going to blow through some of these a little quicker. You can review them. Some fumbles. Fumble! Ball! It's on the ground! Yeah, and there you go. So, yeah, look. We go from a picture like this, where he's fumbling it, so the focus has to track the ball, well, pretty much focus tracking wherever I put it, and then it continued to autofocus as they hit the ground. You can see that this guy is sharp right here. Look at the Rydell. Look how sharp that is. Look at the spikes right here. They're sharp. So the autofocus is doing a great job. And you don't really need the motor drive through this stuff. You really don't. Look at this black and white done with a 70 to 200 2.8. Boom. Really, really sharp. Looks good. There it is, finally in focus. Yeah, this is grain. It's not noise, to me this is grain. And this is perfectly acceptable. I am perfectly happy with this. And here, a lot of people ask what programs, what softwares do I use to get rid of noise? I don't, I don't use any software to get rid of noise. Um, I don't like the noise reduction because what it does is it softens the image. I rather have the specs and the grains that I see here than to have a soft image that no longer looks sharp. All right, so moving on to the next one. This is a series. Uh, of I think it's eight one two three four five six seven eight in a row I motor drove so I motor drove for you guys to see how the camera would do let's follow it and let's see if they're all in focus boom 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 we'll zoom in here what does that say oh I know what that says that looks good to me boom Look at the background, look how nice that looks. Good, good, another, another, and another. So that's motor driving through eight frames, which is about a second and a, uh, over a second and a half of time because you get 5.5 frames a second. So it's just under two seconds here. Very happy with the results there. That worked well. Action shots, more action shots, diving shots. So tracking the subject, making sure that some, you, know, you get them in focus. You can see here, the focus area. Look how narrow and shallow it is. What am I at? I'm at 3.2. Let me talk about this real quick. I know I talked about it in the video, but the reason I went to 6400, one is I wanted to push the camera to the extreme, but two is because I wanted to shoot at 3.2 instead of 2.8 so that my depth of field no longer is this shallow, it's a little more. I have a little bit more reach, not reach, but I have a little bit more leeway that if it's focus here and the nose, these places are going to be in focus. So it gives you more ability, like if I could shoot at f4 for sports, I probably would if I had bright daylight because that would give me a little bit more tightness and focus. The background's still gonna blow out, but 
I, went to, I wanted a faster shutter speed, 800th of a second. I wanted to shoot at 3.2 instead of 2.8, so I know I needed to bump my ISO up from 4,000. I went to 6,400, and you can see right here that these results are spectacular. As you zoom in, yeah, of course you're gonna see grain, but 6,400 outdoors in low light situations. Another thing I wanna reiterate is, is the importance of good glass. You've moved into a full frame world. If you're going to a full frame world, it's time to get better glass. That's my opinion. Some people are gonna say that all I do is push gear. I don't push gear. I push quality things, and we're gonna get to more of that in a minute. But I'm saying if you're going full frame, you're gonna invest the money in a $2,000 or $2,100 camera, you want to put quality glass on it. Because when you use a 2.8, when you use a 1.4, or anywhere in between, what you're doing is giving yourself the ability to, to even max out the ISO, but still, get better pictures because if you max out the ISO at 6400 and you're using a 5.6 you really don't have a lot of leeway there but when you can open up your your lens and let in more light you're going to get better images at 6400 ISO because you're already letting more light in better glass now that you're moving to full frame if that's your choice is going to be really important to helping you get quality images moving forward here Nice frame, capture the guy here. Of course, you know, the shadows from the helmets and the face, but this looks good. And then I picked this image for one reason. What I want you guys to notice here is, is something, look, this is uncorrected. We'll look at it uncorrected. You see the black area? We're at 6,400. No issues here, no issues at all. I just wanna show you corrected real quick. But do you notice over here in the exposure area, what's that say, 0.00? .00. And how does the grain look? How does the noise structure look? Looks pretty damn clean to me. Looks pretty clean to me. This guy's moving. Uh, so the point here that I'm trying to get across is that if you get your exposures right on or within a half a stop or less, if you're that close, noise becomes less of an issue. As you start to miss your exposures more and more, and you try to bring them back, and then you start cropping, that is where you see issues with any camera. That's where noise is gonna show up. This camera is handling this extremely well, even if I'm off by a half a stop. It's not bad, but on this shot, the, the exposure is right on. It didn't need to be tweaked. So what you would see if you had a major issue is look, this is when you start to see noise or grain. If you have to bring back a file this far, just look how it introduces the noise and the grain. So we've got more to go through. Very happy with these results. Colors look fine. Of course, we're shooting raw. We can make the changes, tweaks. That looks good. Boom, boom. Some more action. This is all one set. It's tracking the subject the whole time while I'm shooting and anticipating the motion. And I did motor drive all the way through. I held the button down once just to see how far the camera could go. You could get about 10 or 11 frames before the buffer fills up. So if you are doing quick shots, you know, three, four, five shots in a row, and you then wait 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds, you still have room in the buffer to get the pictures going. Uh, so if you outrun your buffer and shoot 10 frames, 11 frames in a row, which most likely you, you, you won't be doing too often, then you have a chance of outrunning the buffer. Now that's one of the limitations of the camera. The buffer is not as strong as in a D800 um, or anything like that. So we'll just keep moving through here and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. And then we have some portraits of Sam Green just to show you. 1000 ISO with a 14 millimeter. These are as solid as solid can be. Just wait for it. Look at that. Look how sharp and contrasty and beautiful this looks. Look at the background. Look at the out of focus area. I mean, it, it, it's really, really, really good. Very happy with the quality of the results that I'm getting after uh, we're sitting here at the computer. Nice portraits, you can review all of these online. Don't forget, if you're new to photography, you picked up a D600, you're looking to get out of auto, you can check out the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide to getting out of auto. It's gonna really give you a jump start, so check that out. Um, good, 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 good. I should probably wrap this up. Here's some wide shots that I did, but let's wrap this up. I'm very happy with the results from the camera. I'm not gonna sit and compare it to a D4. I'm not gonna compare it to a D700. I'm really not gonna compare it to anything else because this 
it's its own camera. Pe some people have said from a D90, would this be a good upgrade? Absolutely. This is the first full frame camera and it hits the mark. It does a great job. The quality of the autofocus is spot, it, you know, it's very, very quick. It's good. The buffer is a little slow when you're filling the, when you fill it up, you have to wait. So you get 10 or 11 raw shots uh, 14 bit, they're compressed raw files. You get 10 or 11 shots before that clogs up and you have to wait until the, the, the files get written to the card. But like I said, the autofocus is good. The low light capability pushing this to 6400 ISO, perfectly fine in this situation with the quality glass I was using. Uh, the functions of the camera, I don't really get into the U1s and the U2s, but where U1 and U2 will come in handy is if you switch from photos to video or you're doing, you have an indoor setting. So it's a basic setting for indoors and then you have an outdoor setting for when you get outdoors. It's good to have the option to set a preset of a U1 and U2. I would like that for my camera in a D4. I would like to have the option of setting one for what my video setting should be and the second should be for low light shooting or whatever I want it to be as a starting point. Um, what else? could I talk about with this? What other questions did people have? I mean, the menu is simple to use. The buttons are laid out in a great place. The D600, the D800, the D800E, the D4 all use the same button setup in terms of setting um, to get to live view. It's got that new switch on the back. One is live view for stills, then live view for video. Uh, and then you have the record button on the top. That's very good. The, the battery life was good. I think I went through 212 shots and it was still at 87 or 82%. And that was with a little bit of video. The video quality, I didn't fully test out. I will probably do more D600 reviews while I have the camera. Uh, I will throw up some other reviews with videos and other type shooting because I have some concert shoots coming up. So I'm very, very happy with the results that are here. Um, any questions that you have, you can leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them with future D600 review videos. But to get into the game, to jump from a DX camera to this area, it is a step up. It is a step up from a D7000. Uh, it is a, D a step up from the D90. You're now into a full frame area. If you're a full-time pro, if you're doing weddings, if you're getting paid to shoot, um, or, you know, I'm just going to say that a D800, if you can afford it, may be a better option to go for the better built camera, uh, for just the better durability. But if you're just jumping into the full frame end, save that extra thousand dollars, invest that into D, into FX glass when you jump into this camera. And I think you will have a good starting point. So I'm very happy with the results so far. And like I say a lot, put any camera in any good photographer's hands and they should be able to use it, whether it's a D3100 or even back to a D3000 to a D4. Give somebody a D600, you gotta use it to, you know, using your knowledge. A lot of what I did was shooting in manual. A lot of what I do is shooting in manual. So I shot the D600 the same way that I would shoot any other camera. And again, it comes down to fundamentals. If you understand your exposures and you understand the compositions, uh, you're gonna push the camera to its extremes and to its limits, and you're not gonna see poor results. Like we pushed it to 6400 ISO. Sure, we could have gotten slower shutter speeds uh, and dropped the ISO, but we don't have to. We have the leeway to bump it up a little bit to compensate with a faster shutter speed to freeze the action. It all depends on what you're shooting. So when you understand what you're doing with your camera and your setting, with more so with your settings, you can shoot any camera. So I do approve this camera. It smells very good. Good sniff test. Works out well. Very happy with it. I could see shooting concerts, weddings, portraits, just about anything. So it's a good starting FX camera. We're going to leave it at that. And that's the end of the timer. I don't want to go too far over. Thank you for watching the D600 review. There will be some more. There you have it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Are you subscribed yet on the YouTube channel? Well, click this subscribe button right here. Also click this box if you want to be emailed every time I upload a new video so you can get the latest video uploads as they happen. And also, if you haven't signed up for the free user's guide, sign up right here, put your name, email address in here, hit send it, you will get a free ebook sent to your email as well as a link to a 60 minute long video on flash photography in the studio that Adam and I created. So please do that and we'll see you.